The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 28th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you are listening at the normal time frame, which is now 11 to 12, well, we'll make this show as pertinent as we can for you. If you are listening live, though, we would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, again, if you're listening between 8 and 9, you can always send me an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. Now, inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, that would be very cool. Of course, if you are inside our Tiger's Den, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. As we take a look at uh, U.S. equity futures, they're all trading lower. Dow's only off by 11 points. The NASDAQ getting hit hard because of Apple and, and Amazon. It's down 114 points. Uh, that's about 1% to the downside. The S&P's off 22 points, about a half a percent. The Russell's off only one point, so that's flat out there. Over in Asia last night, it was a sea of red. Uh, down about 4% for the Hang Seng, 2% uh, over 2% for the Shanghai. And the Nikkei off a little bit less than 1% or 240 points. Over in Europe, Europe this morning, the DAX is trading lowered by 75, and the FTSE's off 27. Gold's down 13, silver's down 24 cents, platinum's off 11 bucks, palladium's down 25, copper's off six pennies, light sweet crude is off 88 cents, natural gas is down nine pennies. It's a sea of red out there, not a sea of red. We take a look at the U.S. dollar index up 222 ticks. Of course, I do have a 10-minute delay out there. It's trading out at about 110.67. So let's do this here. Let's just take a quick peek at our uh, nine-panel market update chart out here, get a feel for what we're looking at. Got the ES mini. The ES mini, what this doesn't show, is that this completed a TD9 count top yesterday. So the key level of resistance here is going to be the high of that pattern. That's October 26. That's at 3897.50. Well, what we also have at 3897.50 now is a new bearish structured, I'm sorry, bullish structured daily profile. And that profile formed above the prior profile. That is a signal of a bullish trend. That signal would remain, that bullish trend signal remains as long as price closes above the bottom of its daily profile, and that's at 36.67. So we've got a topping signal inside the ES Mini. We actually have a bottoming signal inside the spot follow tunix. It completed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. So here's what we're watching for today. We're watching to see if price closes below yesterday's low in the spot volatilics. Yesterday's low is 26.94. Well, one, that's going to suggest move down to its lower Bollinger Band. Let's say 50 to 1 Bollinger Band um, set of um, parameters. And that would uh, be targeting 25. But it would also negate the TD9 count bottom. And that would suggest that the ES Mini would at least go target that high again, that TD9 count high, the top of the profile, up at the 38.97. Whereas... If the TD9 count takes hold, then what should happen is price should at least go target that 50-day exponential moving average. That's at 28.36. Now, the 50-day exponential moving average is very key because when price is above it, that's really a bearish directional signal. When price is below it, that is a bullish directional signal. I know you might be saying, what the heck do you mean, Stevie? Well, all that we really have to do is just simply take a look at uh, which set of charts out here. That's not it. There we go. It's this chart right here. 
So here I've got the uh, green and yellow box, the representative of time periods where the spot volatility is generally speaking above the 50 day or below the 50 day. And right now we're below the 50 day. That would in essence would uh, create these uh, green boxes. I'll have to go back and update this chart out here. But typically when the spot politics is below that 50 day, uh, price moves sideways to higher. The difference is that right now what we know is we've got a TD9 count bottom pattern uh, that formed that completed yesterday inside the spot follow today so that means yesterday's low really key now if we take a look at the nq whereas the es mini has a top the nq does not it has an a to b equals cd to the upside pattern that's not even in let me see the low on that i'm using was using for the b point was the low of october 21st that low was 10.935 yesterday's low was 10.921 yeah so that's not even a valid TD9 count, or I'm saying A to B equals CD pattern, we'd have to adjust that to yesterday's low. But here's what's really most important about yesterday and two days ago. And that is there was a new daily profile that formed inside of the NQ. Now, the NQ, arguably the weakest of the four equity future contracts, but all it is doing is consolidating with inside its daily profile. So yesterday, it tested that profile low. That held. The day before, it tested the profile high. That held. What's the profile low? 10,917. What's the profile high? 11,631. So whichever side of that breaks perhaps tells us where price is going. However, there is a weekly profile with support down at 10,734.98. That's really the level that the NQ would have to close below to suggest that there's trouble in Reverse City. If we take a look at that U.S. dollar index, speaking of new profiles, it too is attempting to form a new profile. The bottom, and now this profile is just slightly above the prior profile. Again, a bullish directional trend from a profile standpoint. Support now for the U.S. dollar index is down at a buck nine, 109.81 to be exact. Resistance, 113.38, the top of the new daily profile. If we look at Goldilocks, that's just consolidating between support. The support area being its uh, Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom, level at 1622.20, and resistance being the top of its daily profile at 1682. Silver finding clear resistance at the top of its daily pro, a weekly profile, that's at 1957. Light sweet crude should go target uh, 9094. Uh, you got natural gas consolidating with inside its daily profile as well, support between 568 and resistance at 636. And the 30 year Treasury attempting, it has a nice buy the D point pattern, but price struggling at resistance levels. Those resistance levels being 121 and a quarter, 123.14, and 124.09. So that's just kind of an overview of the general markets and what's going on there. Uh, let's uh, uh, for our next uh, action here. Um, let's do this. The chart time frame um, is, that I think is the one that's most significant to us is the 30 minute time frame. So, well, let me do this first. Let me do this. Let me let's uh, we're in the black background. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me make sure that I'm clear about this. We have a TD nine count top in the ES mini. We have a TD nine count top inside the Dow. We have a sell the D point. No, we don't have a sell the D point pattern. We have a we have a we have an A to B equals C D pattern. The Russell 2000 that made its one to one price objective of 1845.90. We do not have a bearish reversal candle. We do have a new profile that's attempting to form inside the Russell with support at 1784 and resistance at 1829. And inside the NQ, all we have is consolidation with inside its daily profile out here. So only two of the four equity future contracts with valid topping patterns. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back, we'll look at the 30-minute charts for each of the equity futures. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Futures, uh, about flat. They're off five points right now, three points. Uh, ES Mini is basically flat. It's the NASDAQ and S&P that are uh, trading lower by 1% and a half percent. It's the S&P 500, TAS market breadth signals that we're looking at right now. And what you'll see is they are in the bullish configuration for the weekly, daily, 240- and 60-minute time frame. If we look at the shortest time frame right now, the 60-minute, you'll see there's 170 instruments trading above the top of a 60-minute profile. That would be a bullish directional signal versus 166 that are trading below. So we've still got a bullish crossover going. So we have positive market breadth at 818 in the morning. With regard to for all four time frames, we have a mixed bag when it, we take a look at the NASDAQ 100. It is bullish for the weekly, daily, and 240 minute. It is bearish for the 60 minute. On a 60 minute, 17 instruments trading above the top, 51 below the bottom. So it's really the 60 minute time frame that we would kind of focus on here. But I also do have uh, this data for the 30-minute uh, time frame. And if we take a look at the ES Mini right now, or the S&P 500, this has a bearish crossover. The red line above the blue line right now, as of 8.19 in the morning, there's 88 instruments of the S&P 500 trading above a 30-minute profile, 200 below the bottom. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100 out here, the NASDAQ 100 for its 30-minute time frame, also with a bearish crossover with 13 instruments above a 30-minute profile, 53 below the bottom. So that's what takes us into our 30-minute time frame charts because what we're looking for here are signals. We know that on a 30-minute basis, we have a bearish crossover for both the S&P and the NQ. We don't have that same configuration for the 60-minute time frame chart uh, for the uh, S&P and for the uh, and NASDAQ. So let's look at the 30-minute time frame charts out here. Each of these form TD9 count bottoms. Those TD9 count bottoms formed or were confirmed at about 4 o'clock this morning. So you can see those on your panel, on your screen out here. What price do we need to do in order to suggest that there's going to we're back in rally mode out here, at least, 
would be close above their TD nine count breakdown area. So for the ES Mini, the level to write down at your pad of paper, whether it's 820 or 1120 in the morning, is going to be 3808. On a 30 minute basis, if price closes above that, that suggests that we have a further rally unfolding. For the NQ, as weak as it has been, if price can close above 1117275, then the next direction is to the upside. The next direction for the NQ would be, or the next target, I should say, would be 11515. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, also a TD9 count bottom, its key level of resistance that would need to fail to suggest that its rally on would be 32134. And finally, the Russell 2000, which has gotten very close to testing it this morning. That was uh, about a half an hour ago. That level is 1813.50. The actual high half an hour ago was 1813.20. So a close above that is going to suggest, and that being 1813.50, is going to suggest to move higher. Now, likewise, we've got a TD9 count bottom. So if price takes out those lows, then that suggests that the market continues to move lower out there. So which way is the market going to break? I don't know. Right now with the market here above profile levels for the ES, the Dow, and the Russell 2000 for their 30-minute time frame, it, and above their oscillator and change line, it does suggest that price should take a look, run at those TD9 count breakdown areas. But, of course, on the 30-minute, there's still negative market breadth. So not, now if price closes above those uh, those uh, TD9 count breakdown areas, that likely will flip back to a uh, bullish signal on the 30 minute time frames out there. And remember, the S&P 500 is bullish for all four time frames from a market breadth standpoint as we speak. Even though it's got a TD9 count top and even though it has a new daily profile, uh, that new daily profile was confirmed yesterday and that resistance level is up at the 3897.50 area out there. So what else is it that we can take a look at in the equity markets out here? What else is it? Nothing comes up at the top of my head just yet. So let's do this. We've got a couple of questions that have come in. Why don't we switch over and take a look at uh, and answer those questions. The first one this morning coming in from SNP inside the Tiger's Den. And SNP wants to take a look at Taiwan uh, Semi. I believe it's Taiwan Semi. Let's see here. Let's get to the Daily Weekly out here. TSM is the uh, ticker symbol out here. So let me get this in here. TSM. And then, you know, we'll do after these, we'll take a look at the pre-market, what's going on with Apple, what's going on with uh, Amazon out there, because Amazon could be generating A to B equals CD to the downside today. So we take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor. What we have out here, S&P, is we have a Rose Mintum indicator signal, but what we don't have is the uh, bullish reversal candle out here. And price is below the bottom of its daily profile. Now, you only see two lines out there. And the reason is because at the, cent the center and the bottom are the same thing. So 63.58. Now, that should have acted as strong support. S&P, it didn't. The question is, will that act as strong resistance? Well, I don't know, but time will tell. Uh, but right now, with price above the oscillator and change line and move up to 63.58 would make sense. You do have or you will complete a TD9 count bottom this week on a weekly chart for Taiwan Semiconductor. So whatever the low is this week, now so far the low in Taiwan Semiconductor is, and I don't know if this will hold through the day, but the low so far is 59.51. Let's assume that is the low. If price were to start, if price, well, first started trading below it, but more, more importantly, close below it next Friday, this pattern will get, ne get negated. Tell us about a strong move to the downside. The next move to the downside will be 50.54. The monthly time frame should complete bar number nine of a TD9 count. Now, the bottom of a TD9 count can occur on the bar following bar number nine. So that might be in the month of uh, November. Um, and uh, so the monthly could give you a, uh, you, you might be getting a buy signal now. You gotta watch the weekly. You'd like to see the daily get back above at least the bottom of that profile, 63.58. If you did that S&P, then it'd be looking at a move to 66.10. Now, Taiwan Semiconductor, as it closed out the session yesterday, was just testing support of its 30-minute uh, profile. Let me see where Taiwan Semiconductor is trading as we speak right now. I've got to do that on a different screen. If you give me a moment, you don't have a choice. TSM is trading at, so close at 6103, trade at 6066. So I believe that is below the bottom of that uh, current 30-minute profile out there. It is 6099 is that level. So if price does close below, or, or yeah, close below on a 30-minute basis. So that'd be at 10 o'clock. Uh, close below 6099 is going to suggest that price is going to go target its recent low from uh, 
October the 25th out there, and that low at the 59.51 area. So now that was a 30-minute chart. Back to the daily, what does that mean? It means really simply that from a daily standpoint, you still need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. So SNP, I hope that helps you out with regard to the possible bottom that you were looking at. And uh, thanks so much for your early request. Robert uh, writes in, he wants to take a look at natural gas. So let's get back to these uh, charts out here. Let me get that. We're looking at the December contract. Let's actually re read Robert's uh, question. And uh, Robert, thanks so much for writing radio show question in that uh, little dialogue area. Uh, just simply, it, I can differentiate your email from all the other junk that I get out there. So if we take a look at it, he says, uh, could you look at, give us a review of natural gas, love your shows, miss the den, uh, Bob, a.k.a. Tucker. Well, we miss you in the den, too. But uh, thanks for the uh, request out there. So natural gas is right now, it does have a buy the D point pattern. We're looking at the daily time frame chart. In fact, I'll just simply expand this out. Well, all the other charts are still populating. So let's just give this a moment here. So we're going to have to do that, Bob, when we get back from the, or Robert, when we get back from the, uh, oh, you said Bob, uh, when we get back from this breakout here. But on a daily basis, natural gas right now, just consolidated with inside its daily profile after forming a buy the D point pattern for its daily time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. 829 in the morning. If you're out listening at uh, 1130, thanks so much for uh, doing that. We'll be back to normal programming hours on uh, Monday. 
11 a.m. Uh, sharp. But if we're taking a look at the natural gas contract, this is for uh, Bob. So again, the daily time frame, Bob, you've got a valid buy the D point pattern that was confirmed with that uh, bullish piercing candle. All that has led to is a consolidation with inside the daily profile. If price does close below the bottom of its profile, this is a daily natural gas for December. That level is $5.68. That's going to at least suggest a run for the low from October 24th, that low being 534. If we look at the other time frame charts out here, Bob, the only one that sticks out to me that's got a valid bottom or topping pattern out here, it's really a topping pattern and signal, is the four hour time frame chart. It's got a nice TD9 count top. And price right now is taking on its support level. Now, this current candle here does not close till 10 a.m. It's 8.30, so another hour and a half. And price may hold. It's trading below the bottom of that profile, which is $5.78. Um, it's trading at $5.75. But that, that level may hold may hold if price does close below that at 10 o'clock then the signal would certainly be a pullback to support now that's 534 that's a td9 count breakout area but the first level of support goes back to the daily time frame and that was at five dollars and 68 cents so that's the level that price would need to be trading below bob to suggest that uh, price might be targeting the TD9 count breakout level on the 240 minute time frame chart out there so that's what i see when we take a look at natural gas um, if we look at uh, now, there's really not much else to look at here when I say I take a look at natural gas. So I, I do hope that that helps you out, uh, Bob. And uh, thanks so much for uh, writing in. So no other questions that I see at the uh, moment. Oh, I take that back. I take that back. Uh, we've got uh, Hector and Hector wants to take a look at John Deere. DE is the ticker symbol out there. So let's go switch over to our three time frame charts out here. Let's put in DE so we get those charts here fired up. Um, 8.30. Was something just released? It must have been to my computer. I hear the, uh, you can probably hear the drives firing up back there. So 8.30 on a Friday. What is it that was released out there? Somebody in the den knows. Um, so this may take just a moment here for um, for my charts here to uh, populate. John Deere, let me go back to my black background charts because those I should be able to as three time frames. Oh, there we go. We got the John Deere charts. So the question from Hector is posed to us, Steve. The early bird gets the worm. Happy, fabulous Friday. Back at you, my friend. John Deere on a weekly basis. Please give us the offset and change line and support and resistance levels. Have a great weekend. Well, you too. So on a weekly basis, that's pretty easy. The offset and change line closed yesterday at 359.89. Price also closed above John Deere. Uh, the high from the trading session of August 26, now, at least yesterday. The question is, will it close above that at week's end? So that was high was 392.93, close at 394.59. If price closes above 392.93, well, first it had volume of 9 million shares. So far this week, the volume on deer has been 5.6 million shares. And on a daily basis, last yesterday was uh, 2 million. So you're at, uh, you can, so let's assume you're going to do about 2 million. So that puts you at about uh, 7.6, 7.6 versus uh, 9. So you could get a A to B equals CD. That wouldn't be confirmed by volume, but would be confirmed by price on a move higher out there. Now, the daily time frame shows that yesterday was a sell the D point pattern. What do you mean, Stevie? Well, first, there was a TD9 count bottom that formed on September 23rd. So that becomes the starting point for our A to B level. The question is, where do we want to draw the A to B point to? And there's a different, a number of different spots that you could most certainly choose. The one that really sticks out at me would be I would draw to where it's labeled the C point. Now, that's part of the Chapman wave count out there. And the reason is because if we use that, then we can see that there was a lower low that formed on October 13th. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just simply going to take that line that I drew. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply move that over to then to the bottom that formed that C point. And what we'll see here is this generated more than a one to one A to B equals C to the upside. Now, the way that that pattern gets confirmed this would be a topping pattern, is we wait for a bearish reversal candle. That's what took place yesterday, a bearish shooting star. Now, the cool thing about a bearish shooting star candle, my experience is it either works or it doesn't. 
meaning price either closes lower, trades lower, which tells you it's working, which in this case here, Hector and Patty, price would then target its daily oscillator and change line. That's the number that you want to make sure that you know about, not the weekly, but the daily, and that would be at the 380.07 area. Now, there's also a TD9 count top that's present. The two tops... Um, mean it's a hot, better top than uh, than uh, than one? No, not really. And in order for the TD9 count to complete, what John Deere needs to do today is close above bar number five. That closes 385.89. But either way, you still have a sell the D point pattern. That suggests at least a retracement, Hector, and that retracement should take us back to its oscillator and change line. Currently in the 380-ish range, that number is going to change. And if price were to move below the oscillator and change line, then we'd be looking at a move back to the uh, top of its daily profile. That's at 359. In the pre-market, let me see where John Deere is uh, trading out here. DE, obviously the ticker symbol. The last trade here firing off at 396. So you had 395.99 at 87 shares go off at 396. Uh, so this is suggesting that it wants to form that A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, let's draw that pattern in here. Even if it crosses that B point and it does it with lighter volume, that does not mean that it cannot go on to complete that pattern. So there's your A to B point. I'm just going to move that over to the C point level out here. And so it close above that uh, high, that high being from, again, August 26, being 392.93. And the pre-market, last trade again, firing off the 396, should take us back to the highs from April. The one-to-one -one price projection would be in about the 436 level. The resistance area is all the way back here, April 22nd, and that's up at the 446.76 level. So that's what John Deere is doing, really, the course of the next couple of days. Remember, on a TD9 count top, the high can form on bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. So John Deere may not give us that confirmed signal until Monday. So Hector and Patty, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. Let's check, see if there's any other requests out here. No other requests by uh, email. Uh, and you can send me an email request if you like at steve at tfn.com. And inside that subject heading, just as Robert had done, uh, uh, go ahead and please put a radio show question out there. All right, so what do you want to take a look at uh, next out here? Let me see what's going on. Let me switch back here, see what's going on. So now you got Dow Equity Futures up 73, and the ES and the Russell's up uh, five points out here. So real quickly, I want to go back to that 30-minute set of charts out there because that's really the set of charts where we had the most consistent – uh, information with regard to signals. Those were TD9 count bottoms that formed at 4 o'clock this morning, and boom, voila. So all four. So whatever was released, nobody told me. Um, I don't know what got released today. This is not Jobs Friday. That's the first Friday. In any event out there, whatever was released, obviously it's impacted the market. And right now, it's 837. I don't know what it's going to look like at 9 o'clock, but you do have the ES Mini now above. TD9 count breakdown resistance at 3808 will it hold that i don't know and the nq so far it's gotten you know it's gotten above it it's right back below it at 11172 the russell's still above it at 181350 and the dow 32134 so those tdnk out breakdown areas really helpful uh again we're in between time periods out here what i mean is this next bar does not close till nine so what it's doing at 838 in the morning is somewhat irrelevant out there um so we'll try to do what we'll try to do is come back to that as we close out the show, which is usually about two to three minutes before the uh, hour. So Steve Rhodes with TFNN, you've got Dow Equity Futures up 85, Russell Futures up six, NASDAQ Futures down 63, the S&P off seven. When we come back for this break, let's go take a look at what's going on with regard to Apple and Amazon in the pre-markets. might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So it was the uh, personal consumption expenditures. Thank you, uh, JB, for uh, letting me know what was uh, released at uh, 8.30 this morning. And obviously that had a little bit of an impact on the uh, futures market out there. We'll see if that uh, sticks. So the uh, next question, oh, we we're going to go take like what's going on in the pre-market with regard to, um, with regard to uh, Apple, uh, Amazon, and Intel. So right now in the upper left or on the very right hand panel here, you can see the trades that are being fired off for all three instruments. The top is Apple last trade fired off at 145.23. In the case of Amazon, it's 95.70 or so. In the case of Intel, it's 27.90. So you can see what's going on live. Now let's go over and take a look at the charts. So if we take a look at the chart here for Apple, we'll see that it formed a new daily profile yesterday. That new profile has support at 141. 80. That's the price that Apple would need to close below to suggest that there's problems in River City. Well, in the pre-market, it's trading at 145.30. Uh, that's actually, a, and this is a bullish structured profile, and that's above the center of that bullish structured profile. So really not a ton of damage out there, not considering it closed at 144.97, it's trading at 145.30. Um, so it doesn't look like Apple is going to go ahead and pull the markets to the downside, at least not in the pre-market as of 843. Different story here for Amazon. The B point, this is a weekly chart that I have up on my screen, by the way. The B point of an A to B equals CD to the downside for Amazon, again, don't know whether we'll have the volume or not, would be closing below 101.26. Then we're trading at 95 and change right now. So Amazon may generate a weekly A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Whether it has the volume or not, that I don't know. It doesn't matter. A close below 101.26, again, it's a weekly chart that we're looking at, suggests much lower price for Amazon. Intel formed a new daily profile yesterday. 
Its level of support is 2577. More important, its level of resistance is 2757. You're trading at 2786 as we speak right now. That is above profile resistance. Where it will close or where it trades during the day, I'm uncertain. But right now, price is above the top of that profile. That suggests that Intel is in breakout mode. So that's what's going on. So, you know, if are the markets really going to head lower? With uh, Apple not busting through any key levels of support and actually trading above yesterday's close out there? Yeah, I think not. But still, the day is young, and we haven't even started the cash market yet. So watch the support level inside of Apple. That would be at the 141.80 area out there. Uh, we've got a request to take a look at LNG. Uh, that is for uh, S&P inside the Tiger's Den. S&P, thanks so much for that request. Let's, uh, I think we're in the black. Oh, my God, we are not on those charts. She's Louise, Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Talk about a brain fart. Well, we're going to do this here. Now you take a look at the charts to go along with that whole dissertation. Of course, maybe nobody really cared. Um, uh, you know, uh, but here, here you've got it. You can see the new profile that, in fact, did form yesterday inside of Apple. Support at 141.80, resistance 151.30. In the case of Amazon, you see the weekly chart with the A to B equals CD. Again, it closed below 101.26. We're trading below that right now. It's going to suggest a potential A to B equals CD to the downside. And Intel, that new profile resistance at 27.57. Last tra uh, trade, uh, 100 instruments uh, trading off at uh, 27.97 out there. So sorry about that and having us on the uh, wrong uh, page for uh, charts out there, but it is what it is, but we did correct it. So let's take a look at the three time frames out here for Chenier Energy. Now, Chenier Energy in the pre-market, LNG, let's go see what it's trading at, LNG. LNG trading at 175.86. So 175.86 will take us above what? So the high on a weekly basis is the high... Uh, from the uh, trading week of October the 10th out there. And that's at 178.59. So it's not above that. I think S&P you were referring to potential A to B equals CD to the upside or something on a weekly basis. I think that's maybe what I saw. What we've got inside of Chenier Energy, though, is we did have or did have a consolidation pattern on a weekly basis. And that's that first yellow rectangle, the lower yellow rectangle box. Once you find a consolidation, they're pretty easy to spot out there. What you want to do is you want to measure the top and the bottom of that consolidation. Why? Because when you get a breakout to either side, either to the upside or to the downside, what it does is it provides us what's referred to as a measured move, equal to or greater than that consolidation. So right now what we can see on a weekly basis is that uh, Chenier Energy last week closed above the top of its weekly profile. It closed above 172.25 today. SNP is going to suggest at least a run to the top of that consolidation. That's in the 180 area. I am not saying that that is where price will stop. Um, if we were to try to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern on the monthly time frame, we'd be pretty hard pressed to do that. We wouldn't be that hard pressed, but if we do draw that in, and I don't believe my lying eyes out there, so to speak, it would look something like this. And here's the monthly, because we don't have any of the noise out there. The A point, that's a simple thing. That's low from March of 2020. But the B point would probably be the high from May uh, May 1st. And then the C point is the following week's low, the week of, or the following month's low. We're on a monthly chart of uh, June out there. And so that B point, uh, and the retracement was 24. Say, I wouldn't even draw that. It's a 24% retracement. So Stevie's saying no. You need at least a 0 0.382 retracement to really get an A to B equals CD pattern. So not getting a big signal here on the monthly time frame, the daily time frame. Let me open this up here. So the daily chart has a swing point high. That swing point high, 178.59. The volume there was 3.7 million shares. So 378.59, where was it traded in the pre-market? 370, uh, 378, 175.86. What was I looking at? Okay, sorry, I was... I, I don't know. I don't know what I was looking at. 178.59, not 378, 178.59. So price is not above that level out there. Let's just look at the white time frame charts here. Sorry for all that bloviating, but um, bloviating it is. Let's take a look at these white background charts. And the white background charts, no daily signal of any kind of a uh, top out there other than uh, the existing Rogemintum indicator top that had completed on September the 15th. 
and that sets up that resistance level at that 178.62 area. Weekly chart, nothing bearish. Well, there's a TD9 count up. I take that back. So closing above that on a weekly basis, that would be at 178.62. Now, that would be a positive. That would definitely be a positive. You would negate that signal, the TD9 count top. You would negate a Rose momentum indicator top. And on the monthly time frame chart out here, S&P, what we can see is no topping signal whatsoever. Uh, price above its profiles, price above its green house center and change line, no topping signal that we see. So LNG should continue to head higher. But right now, what you know is your battleground. It's pretty simple, 178.62. We get a close above 178.62, and this continues to be off to the races. So hope that helps you out. Thank you so much for the uh, request out there. A quick peek at the uh, what's going on in the pre-market. Uh, back to uh, negative in the uh, equity futures. Dow is now off 26 points. NASDAQ's down 121. S&P's off 22. And the Russell is basically flat out there. Gold is off 20 bucks right now. So how about when we get back from this break and to close out the show, we go take a look at Goldilocks, get a feel for what it's doing. At least it has been consolidating with inside its daily profile. We'll see if there's any intraday signals out here as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So that uh, personal consumption expenditure information, as I said, gold uh, just a little bit lower. It's off 18 bucks. Silver's down 30 cents. They're off uh, a little over 1%. In the case of gold, 
Right now, it's just testing. It still continues to consolidate with inside its daily profile. That's between 1641.40. That's at the bottom. That's support. 1682.10. 1682 that becomes the uh, resistance level. If price does close below 1641.40, it'll take a run for the uh, lows from October 21st out there, where it has a TD9 count and Rhodesman to indicator bottom. That's at the 1621 level. Five hour time frame chart. Price is pulled back to test its profile support area out there. I don't have any kind of bottoming signals out here, a potential on the 60 minute chart, but we're too far away to know whether that is going to unfold from a time standpoint. Point. So nothing else out here to assist us other than those uh, weekly and uh, the daily and the uh, five hour time frame uh, uh, levels of support. Let's take a quick peek at uh, silver out here. See if uh, anything pops up at us out here on silver. It's going to take a moment to populate the chart. Silver is trading out at nineteen dollars and sixteen cents. Uh, silver does have. We talked about this earlier. Silver does have weekly profile support, which will not show up here. The weekly profile support for silver is down at 1848. Uh, and 1823 is the uh, bottom of its uh, daily profile. We can see that right now. Now, price has got this bearish structured daily profile. Price closed above it for three consecutive sessions. So if the move lower here in silver is just a little counter trend move, well, then price should find support at 1892. The low so far of the day inside of silver has been 1898. If price closed below 1892, then that would tell us just like gold is done, which is pulled back or is pulling back to test the bottom of its uh, daily profile area, then that silver would signal to us and move down to the 1823. But right now, all that silver has done is pulled back and tested support. With regard to bottom signals out here, the 30-minute chart shows a, a road momentum indicator bottom. If in three minutes uh, we get at least one tick to the upside, that will confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. The same is true on a 15-minute chart out there. But other than that, I don't see any kind of bottoms. Folks, thanks so much for joining me on early on Fantastic Friday. I want you to have a, a fantastic and fabulous weekend. But more important, stay tuned all day here at TFNN. Up next, Tommy O'Brien with the Morning Market Kickoff. Have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you on Monday, 11 o'clock sharp. Take care, folks.